Uh, this section is uh, titled as LT Attach Call Flow. Um, this section um, is uh, is going to be uh, a, a section that discusses uh, the the life cycle of a UVS. And in a sense, we're going to talk about the different steps that happen uh, inside the um, EPC and the EU TRAN uh, to deliver LTE service to a subscriber. And all the things that we have talked so far uh, are hopefully going to fall into place here and uh, you guys will get a better understanding of an end-to-end -end call flow. Um, um, and the intention is uh, to recap some of the concepts that we have talked before uh, at the same time just uh, uh, tell you how everything um, works uh, in a step-by-step -step manner uh, to get LT service to a subscriber. Uh, here, uh, I've tried to summarize uh, and simplify uh, the life cycle of a UE. Uh, so you have the UE here, and it goes through these steps here uh, in a clockwise direction. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking and focused a little more on the, the steps that are listed in the red font. Uh, but I do have listed some of the other steps that are also essential. Um, in uh, in in the life cycle of a UE. So if a UE is powered up, uh, it acquires the network first. Uh, after it acquires the network, it, it establishes uh, what is called a signaling connection on the air interface. Then it sends uh, an attach message to the network. The network then proceeds by uh, going through an authentication process after which if the authentication is successful uh, we set up some security um, uh, context and information for the ue followed by which uh, there is uh, some esm information request and response the network uh, retrieves uh, some information from the ue uh, that it needs for it to deliver service if uh, if everything works the way it should uh, we go through the process which is called a bearer setup where uh, the bearers for that subscriber are set up in the epc and the eu tran and these bearers can either be guaranteed betrayed bearers or non-gbr bearers uh, and each of these bearers can obviously have their own uh, quality of service um, uh, or QCI indexes and uh, that kind of stuff. Once the bearers are set up, uh, we have uh, uh, IP connectivity from the UE, uh, between the UE and the network, and we can start the data transfer. Uh, now, at that point, uh, the UE is connected uh, and has access to LT service, but the UE may decide to move uh, through the network, and that's where we have the handover processes uh, that may happen. Uh, also, that one other possibility that may happen is that the user, you know, is done with their data session and they just go to idle mode. In which case, uh, the EU TRAN and the EPC are going to release all the bearers um, that were set up for that given subscriber um, in the. Uh, uh, in the EU TRAN and the EPC. The context of that subscriber will still be um, retained. However, the bearers are uh, released uh, on the air interface um, and that is just to optimize capacity. Uh, but at the same time, you retain the context because in LT you uh, kind of always uh, want uh, uh, the always on connectivity. So uh, we'll go through the steps uh, involved in the section uh, in the in the steps that are here in red font in a little more uh, uh, detail in the following uh, slides so here is a ladder diagram uh, that shows the different uh, steps involved in the LT attach um, as you can see here um, each of these uh, lines uh, represent a network element. So we have the UE on the leftmost side. Uh, then we have the E node B, the MME, serving gateway, packet gateway, and we have the HSS to the uh, on the extreme right. Now ladder diagrams are a good way of representing call flow because you can um, 
uh, in a sense using arrows and some description you can uh, identify the call and describe the call flow in a little better way rather than writing everything in a paragraph so um, what we are going to do is as we move from top to bottom um, that is the sequence of the steps that need to happen in order to get LT service to a subscriber so we start off by uh, the UE starts off by a PLMN selection and cell selection and RRC connection setup uh, between the UE and the E node B at that point you have a signaling radio bearer uh, established between the E node B and the UE once that that is done uh, the E node B uh, uh, knows uh, based on the PLMN uh, which MME uh, the sub subscriber needs to be sent to for authentication so that's where uh, we have the the step for MME selection once the MME has been identified the UE um, uh, sends an attach request uh, and uh, a PDN connectivity request to the MME at that point uh, the MME sets up a S1 signaling connection setup uh, with the E node B for this given subscriber and you have a signaling S1 bearer at that uh, point. Once that bearer is established, the, the UE and the network authenticate uh, with each other using the authentication procedures and if the authentication is successful, uh, the MME sends an update location request message to the HSS. The HSS responds with the update location acknowledgement uh, message and at that point uh, the HSS is aware of the MME that the user is registered in as well as it is also knows where uh, the, the UE is located in the network. Now, the MME, uh, based on some of the contents of the PDN connectivity request, is able to go and select the serving gateway and the packet gateway. Now, we had talked briefly uh, that the S gateway selection happens based on the tracking area code, whereas the P gateway selection uh, happens on the APN access point name that is sent in the PDN connectivity request. So once that is those selections are complete, the MME sends um, uh, a create session request to the S gateway first and the S gateway works with the P gateway to create a session for that given subscriber. The P gateway allocates an IP address uh, as shown in this step. Uh, there is a proxy binding update and acknowledgement that happens. Uh, and then the S gateway, once uh, the P gateway has responded, it sends a response back to the MME. At that point, the MME tells the E node B uh, over the S1 AP protocol to set up an initial context for that subscriber the e node b at that point sends a rrc connection a reconfiguration message uh, and at the nas layer there is an attach accept message that is sent to the ue the ue responds back with the rrc connection a reconfiguration complete uh, and and the e node b after reception of this message sends a initial context setup response to the MME. At that point, the MME is uh, the UE is in a connected state. At that point, the attach is complete uh, on the network side, and the UE is uh, sends the first uplink data transmission out to the SG gate uh, SGW. At that point, um, the E node B. Uh, E node B uh, sends um, there may be some modify better request and responses that may happen between the MME uh, and the SGW depending if there are uh, uh, things that need to be changed on the default better uh, after that is done we have the downlink transmission that is um, 
uh, that is enabled and the UE can receive data in the downlink from the network. At that point, the EPS default bearer has been activated and there is IP connectivity between the network and the UE and data can flow in both directions. Now let's, uh, we, what we will do is we will actually break out uh, some of these steps in a little more detail and take a look at them uh, in bite-sized chunks in the next uh, couple of slides so that you are able to absorb the information a little better. Um, I know this is a pretty busy slide, so let's, let's proceed. So let's look at this section first that we talked about in the previous, uh, where UE performs the PLMN cell selection and then initiates and establishes a RRC connection with the LT cell. So what happens here is when the UE is powered up, um, it is able to sniff the RF uh, uh, environment and based on the SIM card provision uh, that's inside the, the UE, it is able to select a PLMN that it, it is searching for. And if the PLMN is found in the area, then it tries selecting cells that match that PLMN identity. And once a, a, a good cell has been identified, uh, the UE initiates the RRC connection setup process with the E node B. Uh, we will not go through the details of the RRC connection setup. Uh, that's a subject of the RAN course, uh, but just uh, just keep in mind that if uh, the um, just just keep in mind that you know the cell has been found and the RRC connection setup is complete. At that point, the signaling radio bearer is uh, is set up. The E node B, based on the PLMN that is selected, uh, selects an MME. And um, at that point, the UE sends uh, an attach request to the MME on the NAS layer. The MME accepts the request and establishes a signaling connection to the E node B for the given subscriber. Next, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, here, uh, carrying on with what uh, we were discussing before, so we covered this aspect. Now let's talk about this aspect uh, highlighted in the in the red box. So the MME initiates the authentication process with the HSS. So this is where this is uh, shown by this link here. Uh, once authentication is successful, the MME sends an update location request to the HSS to update location of the UE in the database. So there is the update location request uh, over the diameter. Uh, that happens uh, between the MME and the HSS and we get an acknowledgement back. The MME then performs uh, the S gateway and P gateway selection uh, based on the tracking area code for S gateway and uh, the APN that was sent as part of the PDN connectivity request. MME initiates a default bearer setup by sending a create session request to the S gateway um, this is where this message goes in. Um, S gateway sends a create session request and a proxy binding update message to the P gateway. There is proxy binding process that happens and the IP address is allocated to the UE. The P gateway sends back a response to the create session request with all the information needed by the UE. So the at this point we have uh, we are actually so we we did the uh, we first connected to the RAN we sent the attach request to the MME the MME worked with the HSS to do the authentication we updated the location of the user in the HSS we selected the P gateway and the S gateway now we are setting up the bearers and uh, we do that by going from MME to the S gateway. Uh, this is still control plane. Uh, we we do some uh, proxy binding uh, uh, process in the P gateway, and then we the P gateway is responding back with a response that has the IP address and a bunch of other information that the UE needs uh, uh, and the network needs to set up uh, the bearer. Once the MME receives 
uh, the create session response uh, from the S gateway, it sends initial context set up a request to the e node B to start setup of default bearers. So the response comes in here. Uh, the MME sends um, sends the initial context setup request to the e node B. E node B sends a RRC connection reconfiguration message with some of the attributes that the MME uh, sends the e node B. The UE sends back a reconfiguration complete message um, and then the e node b sends the initial context setup response back to the mme at that point the attach is complete and the ue is capable of sending the data in the uplink now um, also we based on the uh, the RRC configure, reconfiguration complete message, there are certain attributes that are part of this message that the E node B needs. And the E node B um, actually uh, works with the MME to uh, um, um, say, uh, originate a process called a modify bearer request and a response that happens uh, to update some of the information on the bearers at the S gateway. And at that point, uh, the downlink transmission can start. So after all these steps are completed, we have uh, the default bearer as activated and the UE can send and receive data and has LTE service. So this, this wraps up the LTE initial attach um, call flow. Uh, hope you guys were able to follow. Uh, what I would advise is uh, try to go through this call flow a couple of times and uh, if you have any questions uh, pause the video uh, listen to it and you may also try searching online for each of these uh, messages you know if they don't make sense to you uh, there are some good resources out there as well so see you in the next section